Hey everyone, uh, quick note before today's Sloopcast. Um, I don't know what happened, but the video corrupted. Um, sorry? I know everyone's, everyone was looking forward to seeing Jared's new facial hair, but... Oh, I know. I make so many references to my facial hair, and then, like, I guess we're, we're at least doing this, so you can, you can see it now. Uh, what else did we make reference to? We made reference to shirts. Yep, so shirts. We got shirts. Yay. Uh, what other visual things that we make reference to, Kyle? Um, it showed it showed Apollo at the end, but oh, okay. He, you know what? He's still bugging me. So here, here he is. Come here, Apollo. Come here. There's Apollo. Okay, so we we did that. So there's another visual thing taken care of. Um, uh, I think the I think the other thing we talked about was about in the middle of the show. We talked about how about the possibility of SEC school going up north and jared getting up and walking away he didn't get me this is the first time i ever like left my chair during a <laughs> podcast yeah i made a whole visual show of it apollo just ripped my headphones out of my ears so now i can't even hear anything anymore it was it's been a disaster you guys but it's still it still should be a fun episode to uh to listen to so we're still going to upload it because we frankly don't have have time to re-record it so i apologize for that so we did think we'd at least come on here and Hold on. Should I should I'm going to do the thing? Everyone, when when I do, I'm going to I'm going to Kyle, right. did I lose you? Can you say something for me? I'm here. Oh, OK. I'm here. Hold on. This is what I did when we talked about Georgia potentially having to play in Cincinnati for a playoff game. This is I was like, oh, and then I got excited and I was like, oh, and then I, I got over here. over here in the red lights. And then I then I came back yeah. over and that's that's what I did. So when when that's happening, just picture that that that's what was happening then. Um, and was that all the visual elements from the show, Kyle? Nope, that's it. OK, um, so we're about to uh, we're going to shut up and then the show is going to roll in as normal. And I, I don't know what I'm going to do visually for it yet. It might it might just be like the thumbnail or I might add some stuff. I don't know what's going to happen, what I'm going to do visually with the show yet. Uh, but sorry. We'll, we'll try not to have the video corrupt on us in the future, which is not a possible thing to to ask. But again, if we at least thought we'd sit back down and record this intro for you, just just because. Enjoy the show nonetheless, though. Yeah, uh, you're about to hear about some sponsors. Make sure to check them out because they're red. Bye. This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by our good friends over at the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio. For those who do not know, that is Finley area. Finley, Ohio, Northwest Ohio. They usually say our seasons will take your barbecue from good to great. Uh, wanted to name some seasonings. We don't typically say too much here, but I want to give a shout out to the savory here. Uh, savory is a is what the seasoning that the McKinney actually puts on his pulled pork over at his food truck that he has weekly. Um, you can check out where he and his food truck are going over at the madkinneybbq.com and all of his social medias. Uh, the savory is a salty, savory mix that is sure to be a, your, a favorite on your next barbecue outing. Or you can go with the Brits blend. Uh, it's the same mix that Mrs. Mad Canadian uses herself every time she makes chili. No, it's not chilly weather, weather, but hey, this is it's always, it's always good. It's always um appropriate time to put it on some Brits blind. You can put it on to some potato salad. Um, you can put put it on anything that you want to give it that little bit of heat and savory um taste to that. Perfect on nachos and salsa. Yes, yes. Or the Cajun. It's um it's the great blend of spices that will add extra something to your week night meals gives you that new orleans treatment with cajun from the mad canadian bbq check out those and much much more over at the mad canadian bbq.com again mad canadian bbq.com promo code sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10 percent off your entire order mad canadian barbecue company where they have your butt covered this episode of the sloopcast also brought to you by the iron bean coffee company the iron bean coffee company is also an ohio-based company uh they are based out of toledo ish perrysburg uh, they are a veteran owned company. Uh, all of their coffee is f fresh roasted to order. Doesn't sit around a, a warehouse or a 
the back of the grocery store for weeks and months on end. It's it's completely fresh roasted. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA certified organic. Uh, integrity is at the core of what they do. They import all of their quality, high quality beans uh, directly from uh, places like Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off lands. Gift cards are available, free shipping over $50. There's a subscribe and save service. And they are expanding their 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 list of flavored coffees with their new backroom series. So if you want some flavored coffees, make sure to check out that backroom series. And uh I, you know, I think we'll we'll talk a little about, about some of the different coffees in the next ad read. But for right now, you can just go and visit ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. I am sans beard. Are you? Oh, the YouTubers already know that. And, and of <laughs> course, this is our special YouTube section of the show. Uh, well, so who am I even talking to right now? <laughs> this is the, the audio listeners don't hear this part. This is YouTube only section and they know my beard's gone. <laughs> what a what a what a terrible, terrible special bonus section of the show so far. I know. Good job, Jared. Well, why don't you mock me directly into the microphone so, we, so that people can hear you? Good job, Jared. Listen, Gangland says that without my beard, I look like John Hamm, and I'm going to be riding that compliment for the next two or three years. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but I'm taking it and I'm running with it like it's true. All right. All right. All right let's, let's start the show. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well over here. How are you doing today, Jared? Oh, you know, um, got won a fight with Home Depot, so <laughs> winning that. Um, I'll, I already told the YouTube people. I'll let the audio people know. I am now Sans Beard. We are now into full summer uh, excursion mode. Uh, with the, the, the beard is down to a a long stubble at best, and uh i don't know i think that i think that's it i think that's it for like summer excursion jared right now <laughs> we what are... about what about you kyle how's 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 life over in uh the raleigh durham area oh well, hot <laughs> summer summer all of a sudden came and now it's just humid as heck right now so i know that feel that. ohio knows that feel right now too yes yeah but there you got no, your weather I... talk sun card congratulations yes all right we with that, we we are we are knees deep. We are knees deep into um Jared's giving me a weird look. I don't know what he's he's thinking here, but well, we are knee deep into the wasteland here. So we we got a, a few Buckeye news here, uh updates, and just gonna kind of talk about a few things. Probably the biggest thing here is the 12 team playoff proposal that's come out this this past week. Uh, but before we want to get into that, uh, Caleb Brown, Caleb Brown officially commits to Ohio State. For those who don't recall, Caleb Brown is one of the top wide receivers for the 2022 class um, out of Chicago area. Uh, top 60 recruit in the composite ranking and fifth best receiver in the country. Yeah, uh, if you listen to my episode our episode from a couple of weeks back the one that featured alex gleitman where i gave a uh, 24 person mock class guess who was in it kyle caleb brown caleb brown the mock survives the first commitment since the mock that being said i have a feeling about i'm just gonna say this if i was making the mock this week it would be slightly different already so <laughs> I, I don't i i survived this commitment I might not survive the next, but uh, it, it it should be good. It should be fine. It'll it'll be OK, everybody. Mm -hmm. I still like most of the mock, but we'll see. We'll see. Now, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure most people haven't seen this or never projected to see this, but Ohio State getting a grad transfer to Ohio State, a kicker out of Chapel Hill. Yes. Noah Ruggles. Yeah, uh, very talented uh, grad transfer kicker, Ohio State looking for a bit of depth at kicker. Um, there, There is a video going around of him nailing two straight 60 yard field goals. Um, it was a, it was 60 yards 
without a uh, a rush. So, you know, it's it's not take it with a grain of salt. It's cuz like I said, it was not um it was not not with a defense in front of him. It wasn't there it wasn't a holder holding it in real time. There was no snap. But he did hit two in a row. So, on one hand, but on the other, on one hand, but on the other. So there you go. I, I mean, I, it's it's he's a grad transfer kicker. Why not? Uh, it just goes to show that Ohio State will be uh, pretty rich in in scholarships this year. Uh, they they won't be butting up against it. Um, more news coming out this week. I'm not sure if this is official yet. Um, although I think Berm reported it. But Ohio State's down two more wide receivers out of their wide receiver room. Um, I, it's unfortunate for the players, and um, I, I believe I, I'm I'm hesitant to say their names just because I don't know if like the university has reported it yet or not. But it's not a surprise, and probably uh, these are now the second and third players to leave um, out of the wide receiver room alone, and chances are we'll see I, more wide receivers leave. Um, it is what it is. Um, I, I'm not even sure if they're in the transfer. Uh, they're not actually in the transfer portal at this time. Um, no, they uh, gangland says they did not see time while they were here. It'll be good to see if they can go play elsewhere. I think out of the two guys going, I believe one of them's going to probably medical red shirt or not medical red shirt, but medically retire would be my assumption. But they got their degrees and uh, I, you know, we'll we'll see what happens there. But uh, not not anyone who is going to contribute to the team this year. Uh, and again, I'm should wish it. No, nah, it's fine. Um, it we'll, we'll move forward. Uh, so but it, which is why you see and I think it was down there in Kyle's corner, but we can jump about it real quick since uh since we're talking about the wide receivers um or i may have accidentally deleted it i don't know but uh, ohio state did uh offer a scholarship to a a grad transfer wide receiver uh out of jackson state so if that tells you anything about you know maybe ohio state being slightly concerned about depth at wide receiver especially older depth uh, Chris Olave, obviously a, a senior Garrett Wilson will be in his third year, but outside of that, it's an incredibly young wide receiving room, especially, like I said, after all of the departures occur. So you reach out, you see if you can get another experienced guy onto the field. Does, does he actually end up committing to Ohio state? Does he actually end up transferring to Ohio state? Uh, probably not. Probably yeah. not. Here's a kid last year, or actually this spring, last spring. Uh, 540 yards, seven touchdowns on 27 catches in just six games. Uh, big guy, big guy here, 6'3", 210. And if wherever he does commit, he'll have two years of eligibility. So it's not just going to be a one year, again, it'll be two years. What's his name again? It is uh, Dalen Baldwin. Yeah. I, 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 I don't feel like he ends up coming to Ohio State. I feel no. like he can probably go get playing time somewhere. And I don't think that somewhere is Ohio State. I think he's good enough to go get playing time. So for what it's worth. Yep. Agreed. All right, Jared. Uh, back, to Caleb, back to Caleb Brown real quick. Um, OK. Top 100 player in the country. Top five wide receiver in the country uh, on the smaller end compared to some of the wide receivers that Ohio State's been getting this year. But uh, it's been said that if you were building a prototypical slot wide receiver, this is the this is the prototype right here. So uh, a guy who seemed to be bound for Michigan for a while. But why? 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 Why would you play for Michigan? If you had better options, why would you play for Michigan? Uh, Notre Dame also uh, was uh, in the conversation. Uh, he's a Chicago kid. So, of course, but it seemed to be Michigan and Ohio State for a long time and actually seemed to just be Michigan for a long time. But. Ohio State showed interest and and he made a good call. Yep. Now, good call here, Jared. The 12 team playoff proposal. Now, Kyle, you and I, I think it was only a few weeks back, uh, released an episode that was titled something along the lines of why the eight team 
playoff is the best choice. I, I don't remember what we named the episode, but it was something. It was more than it was more than a few weeks ago. But yes, how long ago was it? I honestly have no idea. It was it was this be over a month. It's got to be about month, month and a half. It's definitely been over a month. If it's under two months, it's a few weeks, right? <laughs> All right. But yeah, here, here's a proposal here for a 12 playoff team here. So with it being playoff? with it being 12 teams, that means that it's it's going to be a, a four week playoff system here. And it's already it's it's two weeks, so they're adding on doubling doubling that essentially. So the proposal here, the four highest ranked conference champions. Again, noted highest ranked conference champions yes we seated one through four each of them will receive a first round bye and then teams five through 12 will play each other in the first round and the home field of the higher ranked team will play home they're that they're at their home essentially um yep and it gives example of that yada 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 so under the proposal the quarterfinals and the semifinals would still be played in bowl games and the championship game will continue to be at a neutral site as under the current format. So according to this here, and this is not official yet, this is an official nope. proposal, but it has not been ratified by like three different subcommittees or two different subcommittees until you get up to the original committee. God, I hate, I hate the bureaucracy of all of this. It's one proposal by a subcommittee that gets sent up to another subcommittee that meets on June 17th. And if that subcommittee approves it, they send it up to another subcommittee that will approve it on June 22nd. And then from and is that the people who actually. I, those people might be the people who actually approve it, but it's it's this came from a subcommittee that's going up to a subcommittee that's going up to a, a maybe a committee or another subcommittee. I, I lost track. But that's how these things go. Uh, Gangland, by the way, I asked why why Microsoft or why Michigan? Why would you commit to Michigan? He goes free Jordans. Honest question. The kids still care about Jordans. That feels like such a millennial thing to care about Jordans. Do do the Zennials do do they care? I mean, I, I don't know. It just for the older millennials, we saw Jordan play, and for the younger millennials it was just a brand and then they're still popular because it's a nostalgia brand mostly for us millennials do the young kids care no it's just for the resale yeah i that's what i'm saying i don't i don't know if the kids coming out of high school care about jordans and i'm not saying they don't i'm saying i don't know okay. anyway yeah um but yeah, but yeah so we were looking at uh this new playoff and first and foremost, this is fantastic because you are essentially now if Ohio state wins the big 10, they're in period. And you're only there. The only guaranteed spots are for the top four conference champions, but I have a hard time seeing Ohio state as the champion of the big 10 and not in the top four. I just, I have a hard time seeing that happening. Um, and of course, it's possible, but I feel like the East is deep enough that you're probably not getting into the championship game if you have more than two losses. Um, and again, it's not just the top four teams. We've seen Ohio State miss the top four teams in the past, but we've is that we've seen Ohio State miss the top four teams in the past. Sure. But was that to four conference champions? Because I don't think that's the case, except maybe when they lost to Michigan State and Michigan State. Guys, remember when Michigan State made the playoffs? <laughs> that was a thing that happened. Yeah, there, there was one year when, yeah, what uh, Gangland said, when Georgia and Bama were in. Yeah. So that's where I can think of. You now can't have two SEC teams in the top four. It's just not possible anymore. So that part I like. That part I like. <laughs> I don't know that that one or the LSU and Bama one that was how yeah. long ago too. But that, that, was, that was that was BCS before yeah. they rebranded themselves the college football playoff. Let's mm -hmm. it's still the same people. Let's be very clear. Um, the yeah. BCS is not dead. They simply changed their name in the format of the of of the BCS. 
It's like just like uh, PayPal and Vimeo. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Didn't PayPal buy Vimeo? That you know what? We are not getting into it. Um, so under this proposal, this is what last year's playoff would have looked like. You would have had Alabama one, Clemson two, Ohio State three. Okay, that, that that's all pretty standard. But you get Oklahoma four as they were conference champions. That slides Notre Dame down to five. Guys, under the current proposal, Notre Dame cannot get a bye week. Ooh, yeah, that, that's actually a good point there. Yeah, even with, with Notre Dame not being officially part of a conference, I know they were temporarily in the ACC last year, but is that is that the nudge to get them into the ACC every year now? Because under this under this plan, if it were to be approved, then approved, and then approved and however many more it needs to be approved for this to go into effect, they essentially need to be in a in a conference if they want to get into a buy. So let's just say even if Notre Dame runs the table, goes undefeated, and they're not part of a conference team, they the best they can do is fifth. Yeah. Now, Kyle, do you do you think this means that Notre Dame's about to join the ACC? I think so. If if this were to go through, yes. If you're not convinced that this means Notre Dame's about to join the ACC, let me I'll offer one piece of information for you. The group that put together this proposal, mm -hmm. Big Ten Conference Commissioner, the SEC Conference Commissioner, the Mountain West Conference Commissioner, and Notre Dame athletic director the notre dame athletic director was a part of the team that put together this proposal so if you're thinking to yourself oh notre dame is not going to be happy when they see this they built this yep notre dame built this they were one of four people who built this proposal so to me this means side note it looks like notre dame is about to join the acc yes yep absolutely now if this is all ratified, if this actually does turn into the playoff proposal, then we still wouldn't see it implemented for like two years. We'll still have four, a four-team playoff this year and the next year, at least, at yep. least. So that gives Notre Dame like two more years of independence, right? I think is, I think is what this means. All right, so look, 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 back, look, back look, on look. track, back on track. Notre Dame falls from fourth to fifth because they're not conference champions. Again, yep. if we apply this to last year, six, Texas A&M, seven, Florida. Here come the SEC teams. But don't 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 freak out yet. Number eight, Cincinnati. Oh, here we go. We're bringing the group of five into There's this, boys. More. There's more, Jared. <laughs> oh, we ain't done yet. Number nine, Georgia. How about Playing that? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Cincinnati in a Georgia matchup. I would have loved that. That would have been a lot of fun. I think Cincinnati wins it in all honesty. Um, mm -hmm. That being but said, it, they wear basically the same uniform, so that would have been confusing. <laughs> yeah. Iowa State play at number 10 playing Florida. Fun. I would have liked to have seen it. Number 11, Indiana. Indiana's in the playoffs, boys. And then Coastal Carolina. Is that who that is, Kyle? Is that Coastal Carolina? That is. Yep. That was. Yeah. Coastal Carolina plays Notre Dame at number five. You're right, Jared. That did happen. Cincinnati and Georgia. That did happen. Remember? Yeah, but what actually would have mean meant. You know what? It, it's <laughs> different. Can we all just acknowledge that bowl games are bowl games? <laughs> Can we all just acknowledge that bowl games are just bowl games? Everyone knows that they don't. I mean, I get that it happened, but did it? It's a bowl game. Am I just covering up because I forgot about it? And am I trying to justify it after the fact? Am I trying to hide the fact that I forgot that it did happen? Maybe. Maybe. You don't want to know why? Because it's a bowl game and who cares? All right. So in, the, in this court, current format, you would have had two um non-power five teams in it absolutely now, granted, granted, granted granted with with it being last year i don't see that happening too often um with 12 like, teams i think it's highly possible i mean 
You got no Pac-12 teams in here. Wow. I had not even acknowledged that. Now, they didn't hardly play, though. They yeah. started like two weeks after the Big Ten played. They still had games canceled. USC what USC played like four or five games, right? Not that Ohio State played a ton of games because they didn't, but. It wasn't wasn't many. I don't know, and I don't care to look up at this point. Well, but yeah, did they, did no, they, they even play their conference championship game? They, I think they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their big well, Oregon lost. I I I I give one big pass to all of the Big Twelve or the Pac Twelve. I really do. They have a new commissioner. Hopefully, that fixes things. Although the old commissioner is taking no responsibility for the failings of the entire conference. He just basically said, not my fault. Peace. Well, while we're at it, fire Kevin Moore. Well, yeah, it's if you looked at what happened to the Pac-12 over the past few years under horrible leadership, it should make you very scared as a Big Ten fan. Very, very afraid. Yep. Yep. All right. So, Kyle, so Jared, what this Jared. means? Oh, we, we both went with the with the so. Um, <laughs> I was th- just these games ask would you. have been played. I feel like this is worth reiterating because I feel like it's a it's an excellent move. Mm-hmm. that these these first round of games would have been played at Notre Dame, at Texas A&M, at Florida, in Cincinnati. These would have been played as home games. And I think that's a great move. Ooh, an SEC school going up north. Oh, man. Could you imagine Georgia playing <laughs> in Cincinnati? And it would have been, if we look at this, um, this is would it have two been- weeks? Uh, under the proposal, the quarterfinals, semifinals will be played as bowl games. Um, teams seeded five through 12 would play each other in the first round on the field of the higher ranked team. Um, where does it? I know I have it in the notes here somewhere. Uh, the first round of games would take place on campus sometime during the two week period after conference championship games. So right before Christmas time, then right before like the week before Christmas, then. Oh, my God, Kyle, we're going to see SEC teams play in the north at some point (laughs) in the north in December, no less. Oh, we're getting our wish. We we, we always talked about like, oh, Oh my God, north in November, come up north in November. Let's let's move that up. Let's move that up a month and say December. (laughs) And Jared, Jared just walks up and says, yes, finally. (laughs) Yeah, that, that would definitely be something. That would be something to see an SEC team coming up north of the Ohio River there. Guys, guys. By the way, they probably would have had to play that at um, Paul Brown. I yeah. don't know if the Cincinnati Stadium is winterized. I don't know how many of the big, I was about to say Big Ten, but any of the northern school stadiums are actually winterized and could play a game that late in December. Um, but it's also a pretty small stadium that they uh, Nippert uh, is pretty small. They may have moved that to Paul Brown. Uh, it would have probably been cost beneficial even, even, for even. Cincinnati to do that. But still, it's a Cincinnati home game. And it's I, I think that would have been fantastic. Is, there is still a real possibility that one of those teams there. Imagine a team having to play in December up in Wisconsin. Oh God, Kyle! I can't get out of my chair for a second. Even uh, Minnesota, even Minnesota too. Oh, oh God! <laughs> we're we're yeah, talking I, we're talking deep north now, Ohio. Yeah. Ohio, we like to claim ourselves as the north, and we are. But like Minnesota, Wisconsin, that's deep north right there. That's the deep north, boys. Yes. All right, all right, Jared. Um, let's. I know there's some more stuff we want to cover here, but let's let's hear from our. Our sponsors for today's episode. I'm sorry, I, I can't get. I don't know why I didn't think of it till now. <laughs> I cannot get over the idea of Georgia playing in Ohio in December. I can't get over it. If it's at Nippert, that's hilarious. Again, I think they would have played it at Paul Brown. But oh my god, <laughs> that would be fine. Oh my God, I want that. I I want a time machine. I want these rules instated last year now or then. (laughs) It would be then. Yeah. Oh, all right, Jared. Let's hear from our good friend over at the Iron Bean. No, you need to go first. I need to recover. I want. All right. All right. Well, let's start. 
I will go ahead and start with the McKinney Barbecue Company. Mention a few of the seasonings um, in the top of the show here. Whoever the box sets that the Mad Canadian has, um, there is the whole hog, which is one of each of the seasonings that's over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Uh, you can go with the sweet heat. Sweet heat is a the versatile seasoning, which gives you sweet and spicy seasoning, such as the Four Horsemen, the Discord, Old Fashioned, and the Two Border. Or you can go with the Just Send It, which is their most versatile seasoning set. Uh, you don't know what seasonings to go with? I suggest going with this box set with Just to Send It. S&P Bud, the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked get you all different varieties there. Uh, from the Mad Canadian BBQ. And be sure to use that promo code SLUCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company over at themadcanadianbbq.com where he has your butt covered. This episode of the SLUCAST also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, let's talk about some Iron Bean Coffee. Nate, Nate, Nate uh, Kyle, I need, I need your help. Either say medium roast, dark roast, or flavored. Uh, let's do medium roast. Medium roast. Let's start with the ride or die. Uh, definitely one of my favorites. Um, the ride or die um, is a gentle, distinctive version of the American classic, uh, the classic American breakfast cup, suburb when drip, drip brewed and enjoyed black. Roasted and turned with cocoa nibs, a Brazilian yellow bourbon bean with superb smoothness and flavor. You'll find caramel, hazelnut, and sweet cream notes in this coffee. Although it's not flavored. Those are just the notes of the beans. Uh, a gently acidic coffee with melodic sweetness and delicate complexity. Milk chocolate, perhaps a hint of fresh cut cedar. God, I love cedar. I love everything about cedar. I love the smell of cedar. I love cedar. And a shimmer of jasmine running through the aroma, through the cup to a clean refreshing finish if you don't want to drink that coffee after hearing that i think you might be dead I, I, that's just my assessment of the situation you might have died at some point i i wish you and your family the best let's see kyle should i do another medium roast yeah do one more here do one more all right let's do the cast iron uh the cast iron again a medium roast um it is a USD, USD certified, USDA, fair trade certified, uh, taste is smooth, never bitter flavors, subtle notes of black pepper, caramel or caramel, depending upon which side of that argument you fall on. And up, oh, lost my place, lost my place and milk chocolate, low in acidity without taking away from any strength or flavor. 100% natural. We do not compromise. And by we, I am reading this directly from the mad or not the mad Canadian, excuse me, the Airbnb Coffee Company site. Um, do not compromise anything with additive flavors or, uh, oils, um, available in ground or whole bean. Um, and I believe this might be, yeah, available in a subscribe and save, which would save you over $2 a bag. So you can find that and a lot more over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Gangland, you just said caramel or caramel like what i said hey no matter which way you say it you just spelled it what what is that supposed to do for me is it care c a r e or car c a r that's that that's that's how you would answer the car caramel mm -hmm. caramel 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 i think i use both i i don't i don't know if i use one or the other honestly mm -hmm. yeah same here all right kyle so in this playoff proposal, you would then have the winner of those games. Let's just give it to the high seed, okay? Now, mm -hmm. this is not a bracket. This is not a college basketball-esque bracket. This works more like the NFL playoff, where you would essentially then have the highest seeds play the lowest seeds. So say Notre Dame beats Coastal Carolina, which I feel like they would have. Coastal Carolina had a good team last year, but so did Notre Dame. Um, the depth of talent takes, I think it's a good game for a while. Notre Dame pulls out in the fourth quarter. I think is basically it pulls away in the fourth quarter. Um, nope, not going to follow that joke. Um, 
So then number five, Notre Dame would play number four, Oklahoma. And this game would be played at a bowl site. Just so we're clear, this game would be played at a bowl site. Um, the quarterfinals uh, would be played either January. Wait a minute, this would would this be the quarters or the? Yeah, these would be the quarterfinals, and these would be played either on January first or second. So these would be played essentially where the original playoff games, which we now refer to as the semifinals. The semi where those would have now those are now January 1st games. So essentially, so essentially the quarterfinals are going to be your New Year's New Year's Day Bowls. So that's going to be like your your Rose Correct. Bowl games and all others. Yeah, you, you're essentially then going to start a or you know, you're continuing the playoff then in a four by four or four. Yeah. An 18 playoff at that point. Um so in this case, you'd have Notre Dame playing Oklahoma. Texas A&M would then play Ohio State. Florida would then play Clemson. And number eight, Cincinnati would then play Alabama. Now, should Cincinnati had survived against Georgia? I don't think I don't, I don't know if anyone was touching Bama last year, as we found out very painfully ourselves. Um, Notre Dame, I think, beats Oklahoma simply because Oklahoma typically uh, has no defense. And I think that eventually that costs them. Although I really don't like Ian book that much. I don't know, Kyle, did, could Oklahoma have won that game? Could have. Yeah. But would they, I don't think so. I think Notre Dame would have won. Would have been a good game. Would have been a good game. Mm -hmm. um, Ohio state beats Texas A&M. Um, although I really liked Texas A&M last year. I did. I just, I liked Ohio Texas A&M's strengths. I feel like if you wanted to beat, Ohio State last year, you had to have like a real precision passing game, real efficient passing game with a real solid offensive line in front of that quarterback. I think that's about the only way you're going to beat Ohio State last year, um, because that's what Bama did. A real precision passing game, very talented wide receivers and a really nice offensive line to keep the quarterback clean, whereas Clemson failed keeping their quarterback clean, I think is ultimately where why Ohio State was able to beat Clemson, but not Alabama. So I think Ohio State defeats Texas A&M. Uh, Clemson beats Florida, uh, although I would have enjoyed watching that game simply because like Kyle Trask and uh, Kyle Pitts uh, is a real fun team to watch. If you could sort of get past hating the SEC teams for the sake of hating the SEC teams, that was a real fun game to watch. That would have been a real fun game. It was a fun team to watch. Would have been a fun game to watch. I think Clemson wins it. And God, God bless Cincinnati for making it, but they were getting buried by Bama. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. So Jared, no, I, yeah, I agree. I agree. Gangland Mond was not a good enough passer to defeat. Yes, I agree. So Although they had a good offensive line. Um, yeah, I agree though. I don't think Mond beats Ohio state. So, so Jared, we, we are, our original, our original discussion back seven episodes ago was why the college football playoff must be eight teams. Yeah. Would you be fine with the 12 team proposal that you see here? I'm okay. I, this is better than four. I would have preferred eight. I would have preferred eight. I would. I, but I still like 12 more than four. That's that. So like if we're, if we're ranking them last place is the BCS one versus two, that's last place. We're, we're, I don't ever want to go back to that. Next would be our current format, four teams. That's that's the next. That's that's number three in the list. Number two in the list would be this proposal. For me, this is too many teams. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I really don't need to see team number twelve playing in the playoff. I I don't want it. I don't need it. Well, I, here's the thing: I do want it because it's more college football. More college football equals better. So let's just say, let's just get that out of the way. Well, well, let, let's just say but even I don't this, want just... to diminish the regular season. And I do fear by putting number team number 12 into the playoff we're 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 reaching into the territory of diminishing the regular season. Well, let, let, let's just say even if this were to go forward, let's that, just that, say Ohio then, State. Then let, our 18 let's... proposal that we did seven episodes ago, that's number one for me. 
let's just say Ohio State gets like fifth, sixth seed. They just miss out on getting that bye. Yeah. They would have to play four extra yeah. games after their conference championship game. Yeah. To what to get to the national championship game. So it's four additional games instead of two. It's it's a lot of extra games here. I know that there's an extra game for the NFL, but I think they're taking away a preseason game or two. But what what's the limit of number of games that college football should play then? Um, I don't know. I, and my, my, my biggest issue with what, well, yeah, it's, it's tough on the players. Obviously it's obviously very tough on the players, just physically demanding on the players. But I think we also need to talk about how this is financially demanding. Yes. On the fans, but more importantly on the families. So what are they going to do? This is going to generate a ton of money before we start doling out who gets that money. Let's first talk about giving some of that money to the families and making sure tickets are available for the families, travel expenses for the families to make sure that they can go to four of these games. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's my that's those are my first two biggest concerns with the 12 team playoff is just the sheer number of games being asked being put on these players it's a lot it's a whole whole lot you have a 12 week you have a 12 week season conference championship you're at 13 and then you're playing four more games let's just say that you're not one of the top four you're playing four more games 17 games that's an nfl regular season schedule right there yeah yes i don't know what else to say to that kyle except yes it's, that is my that is I, I I like this proposal, but that's just my biggest concern is it is four additional games for one of the five through twelve then. Yeah, it's it's and that's it's why, very, that's why we demanding. think an eight team playoff is is the best option. Yeah, I mean, because even then you're talking about three additional games, but three is still less than four. And yes. like you're Three, we don't we don't like we don't like the the four team playoff. I don't know. And, and, I, and I hear someone out there saying, well, how often is one of the outside of the top four teams actually going to? Well, I, I think like, five through seven, even five through eight. A, a legit. Yes, I, I think they can have. There's a legit chance. I mean, you can yeah. even say like Notre Dame there. Notre Dame. If yeah. the order if the orders were switched switched around there. They could have possibly made the the um the championship game, depending yeah. on like how who he would who they would play in the quarters, semis. They there is a chance that they could have been that team outside the outside of the top four. Yeah, I mean, especially considering last year was last year with COVID and everything, it's totally possible that Notre Dame beats Oklahoma. Then they would have turned around and had to play either Ohio State or Texas A&M. Let's say it's Ohio State. Ohio State, again, like one of the things we talked about with Alex Gleitman a couple of weeks ago. Ohio State, Justin Fields had one padded practice before the championship game. In between Clemson and Alabama, Justin Fields had one padded practice because of COVID issues with the team. Ohio, you want to talk about one of the reasons why Ohio State got blown out? And there were several reasons. One of them was just they were woefully unprepared because of COVID. And so now now that's Notre Dame. Maybe Notre Dame can upset Ohio State because they're woke, maybe because of an injury. What, what if it's just Justin Fields gets what if not even a COVID year like just Justin Fields gets hurt? Now you're bringing in Stroud, who's talented, but completely inexperienced. Now Notre Dame defeats Ohio State and is in the championship game against Bama, playing their fourth game. It's totally feasible. I think Texas A&M was a very good team last year. Totally feasible that they make a run at the championship game from the sixth spot. Yep. So, yeah, I want to I want to hear from 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 those who are listening. Um, just shoot us a message or or if you're watching us on YouTube, curious on what everybody thinks about this proposal or what you think might be, might be good too. Like, do you think our proposal that we had 
we'll link like a few few um episodes ago we'll in, link to in, it yep is an is an eight team the best or do you like this 12 team or should they stick to a four team um i'm curious i'm curious on what everybody thinks here it's i, I think we're going to get a wide variety of opinions here and i mean <laughs> i kind of like what you said originally jared i like 12 because that's hey that's more college football I'm, yeah. i can totally get behind that a <laughs> uh, couple things gangland said down here uh, 12 really does diminish the regular season if you're Bama, Ohio State, Clemson, others. Um, still have to grind to be in that top 12. Yeah, I mean, the the good news is, like, does this maybe diminish the regular season a tad if you're one of those three elite teams? It uh, To me, it does a little bit, but, but, but you still want to grind to get to that top four. You get that, that extra five, week. That bye week is insanely valuable. So yes, still getting that top four is good. But uh, to counter that, guess what? If you're Indiana, Coastal Carolina, Cincinnati, in uh, Iowa State, now the regular season means a hell of a lot more for you. So while it might diminish the regular season a tad for the elite teams, but as Kyle pointed out, they're still fighting for the bye week. It does make the season more competitive for a whole new group of teams, because Mm -hmm. as much as we like Indiana or dislike Indiana, depending, but I I do think that's a team on the rise. Now they could theoretically win a national title. Uh, Maybe not, maybe not, but they could at least get into the playoffs and compete for one. And like now, if you are Cincinnati, if you're Memphis, If you're whichever Florida team is hot this year, whether it be UCF or USF or some other combination of U and F, you can now actually get your shot and not just falsely claim a national title. Yep. No, absolutely. All right, Jared, anything else? Anything else you want to cover with us? Got some, got some Ask Sloopcast questions need to cover here as well. Yeah, let's get to the Ask Sloopcast questions. I could talk about this for days. Duncan from the Discord. Will there be themed game posters this year? I don't know if I'm doing the game posters this year or not. Um, I don't know how much attention they act. The whole idea of doing the game posters is you do a game poster. Hopefully people share it and you know, you keep your logo in there and hopefully it garners attention, which brings attention back to the podcast. And they are a ton of work for not a ton of attention. Um, If maybe, maybe, maybe like, and I'm not saying that they would because the Buckeye Scoop could probably afford a better graphics, graphical artist than me. But if like the Buckeye Scoop said to me, hey, Jared, you want to keep doing those game posters? and like we'll make them the Buckeye scoop official game posters. I would probably do that. But again, they could probably afford someone better than me if they wanted to do that. And I just, I don't know if it's worth my time anymore, honestly, like I can probably just put my time better elsewhere, especially if, if Kyle and I do try to move to a daily podcast during the season, that's I feel like the game posters is just one of the things that gets put on the cutting board, the cutting block of things I no longer have time for. But we'll see. Buckeye Zach, will Minnesota's boat be fixed this year? You know, I have not really looked around to see what's happening around. I I really like Fleck. Um, they had tons of ish, COVID issues and players opting out issues uh, a lot a lot of issues last year it's it's hard to get a grasp on what teams are going to be like this year because of the chaos that was last year um i i just i don't have a good feel on minnesota yet i i do think that there are opportunities in the you know the big northwest so i think there's opportunities there cuz i don't know wisconsin should be f- wisconsin should be very good. Northwestern takes a step back this year. I think Iowa takes a step back or they don't take a step forward at the very least. I I don't have a ton of faith in Nebraska right now. Uh, I I don't, I don't, I don't think 
Purdue's going to do a whole hell of a lot this year. I, I don't have a ton of faith in the Big Ten West as a whole this year. So there's an opportunity there if you're if you're Minnesota. Yep. Yeah, I was just looking. I was just looking at their recruiting here. Nothing, nothing too special. I mean, they got a good amount of uh, good recruits. Um, um, good handful of um, four stars and a lot of three stars. It's nothing that really jumps out to me. So, but yeah, I mean, it just depends on how well PJ Fleck is able to um, develop those players. And yeah, I. And it also just depends upon how good Wisconsin is this year, because Wisconsin yeah, I, I have as my as my, as my champion out of that league this year. Yeah, I I. I don't think the boat's getting fixed this year. I'll, I'll say that right now. Uh, I don't think it's getting fixed, but we'll see. Well, also, um, like what constitutes fixed is second yeah. place in the Big Ten West fixed. Because I I think they can win the Big Ten West. I think second place is a lot more likely is if we're if we're talking about realistic goals for Minnesota this year. I think a good realistic goal for them is second place in the Big Ten West. Is that is that fixed? I guess that just depends upon what you mean by fixed. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Gangland brings up a good point. Mertz should be pretty good this year, too. <laughs> yeah, I like Mertz a lot. It was one of the reasons why I like Minnesota as much as I do. Or yeah. Wisconsin, rather. All right. Uh, next question here from Suncar. How well does Ohio State fare as the big dog versus the underdog? Can the Buckeyes take on the role of the big dog? I'm sorry. How well does Ohio State fare as the role of the big dog versus the underdog? Have you not watched the Big Ten for the past 20 years? Pretty good. Pretty good. Ohio State does not ever see themselves as the underdog. I get they they believe they should have beat Clemson the first time around. They did beat Clemson the second time around. The Alabama game, Alabama offense was insane levels of good and Ohio state had defensive issues that we could spend three episodes talking about. Mm -hmm. Ohio state does not ever see themselves as the underdog. That's, that's not Ohio state's MO. No. Ohio state has not seen themselves as the underdog in probably 10 years, at least ever in any situation. Not, not since the Trestle era has Ohio state ever considered themselves the underdog. That's not a knock on Trestle. It's just Trestle took the program from a place to a better place. And then Urban Meyer took it. I think I feel like that, that's an Urban, Urban Meyer thing. I don't think Urban Meyer would ever allow Ohio State to see themselves as an underdog. And I and I don't think Ryan Day is any different. Yeah, well, I mean, back in 2014, Ohio oh, State was have, an underdog. What is breaking news for us, at least? Of course, we won't release this for several hours, but some of you won't be listening to this for over 24 hours since we record this. But it's breaking news for us. Tyreek Johnson transferring to Nebraska. Uh, he's Ooh. been out there. He's been in the portal for maybe a month. So not a surprise that he's leaving by any means. Um, but yeah, it, uh, Gangland just told us her Tyreek Johnson's Snapchat. He's headed mm -hmm. towards Nebraska. Well, best of luck to him next year other than one game. Yeah, <laughs> other than that one game. One game on November 6th. But best of uh, luck to him. Yeah. All right. Uh, Buckeye Zach, another question from him. Uh, we had Alabama versus Clemson in four parts. Now that the Buckeyes have finally jumped the, Clem the clown son hoop. Clemson. Yes. Is it time for a four or five part playoff dynasty of Alabama and the Buckeyes for the national championship? That whole thing, like we, we like we've seen with Clemson and Alabama is going to be a lot more difficult to repeat because of the new playoffs. It's mm -hmm. one thing to have two teams constantly meet in the championship game when it's a four team playoff versus a 12 team playoff. Because there is just the any given Saturday mentality, like, you never, ever know when you're going to get Iowa, when you're going to get Clemson. You just never know when that's going to happen. So, mm. you know, we, we talk, well, so-and-so should beat so-and-so, and then so-and-so should beat so-and-so, but should, 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 should. 
Yeah. Because yeah. even if a team is going to win the game 90% of the time, they're still going to then lose it 10% of the time. Yeah. It sounds like an obvious thing to say, but it needs to well, be said. In early last week, too, Nick Saban now extended his contract through bullshit 29 bullshit they're never yeah. it, the, the length of nick saban's contract means nothing they'll never let it get anywhere near his actual retirement because it'll make l- recruiting look bad yep there is zero chance in hell zero chance in hell now when when does alabama come up to play ohio state in columbus is it 2027 2028 Oh, I got to look here. Yeah. Can you look that up for me? There is zero chance in hell Nick Saban coaches a game in the horseshoe ever again. Zero chance. Not going to happen. Um, still looking, still looking. Do, 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 do. Home and home series 2027 through 2028, which so happened to be would be 2027 season would be his last one if if he, they would let his contract expire. Which, like I said, he'll retire with like three years on his contract. That's yeah. it's built to do that. They'll they'll never let Nick Saban get to one year left on his deal, even if mm-hmm. everyone knows he's going to retire, because I mean, that's just how recruiting works. He's going to be 70 this year. My point exactly. Saban's got three. Yeah. So, so that means that, that means that if, if he would to fulfill the entire length of his contract, He's done. He would be 76 when he when he um, visits Columbus in 2027. Gangland, I'm going to read this. Maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to. <laughs> oh, oh, please, Jerry. He's going to shit his pants on the sidelines like Paterno soon. I wouldn't oh. have read that, except Joe Paterno is a fucking monster. So there we go. All right, and, so, all and so is Bo Shem Beckler. Else? You got anything else? That's all the questions we have today. <laughs> we need to take Bo Schembechler's name off of all of the trophies and take his statues down too. Mm. Yes. And I said this on Twitter. Do not turn this into like an Ohio State versus Michigan thing. This is what would Bo Schembechler enabled at Michigan is not a football thing. It's not a rivalry fodder thing. Don't make it that. It's very serious. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google. Bo Schembechler, uh, look at what his son had to say about his dad and what happened at Michigan. Don't turn this into like Ohio State versus Michigan, haha stuff. We like rivalries because it's like fun hate. It's it's like it's hate with a wink and a nod. This is actual. This is actual hate. This is actual bad stuff. Let's. Don't don't turn this into rivalry fodder. It's far too serious for that. Yeah. All right, Jared. I think that is all for today's episode. Yeah, uh, that's that's it. Um, uh, let's uh, one more ask Sloop, uh, Sloopcast question from Gangland down in the live chat. Now in a 12 team, do you think those games give more film for teams with buys to develop to develop a better game plan? Um, maybe we're, you're probably talking about two weeks regardless. So maybe if your team number four, if your team number four, you could probably at that point start game planning Notre Dame, right? You could probably, and and you put like some game planners on Notre Dame. You put some other game planners on Texas A&M because the likeliness that both of them lose is probably pretty slim. Right. So that's probably a pretty big advantage for the team in the number four spot versus the team they end up playing. But if you're Alabama, who are you game planning against? Because you could potentially be playing the eight seed, the nine seed, the 10 seed. Like it's a little bit more difficult to maybe I I think it's. But yeah, the the bye week is an advantage on on many terms. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Gangland. Can, can, can it? Yeah, it, it could probably help. But I mean, at that, at that point, most most of the teams are a well oiled machine at that point that they're already going to do what they are going to do that has made, made made them successful throughout that year. Yeah, I just don't know if Cincinnati has the flexibility to 
if you're Ohio State or if you're Clemson, you can throw weird stuff at each other. Clemson can throw some weird stuff at Ohio State and Ohio State can throw some weird stuff at Clemson because you have so much talent and so many moving pieces. But if you're Cincinnati, your your talent's a lot more shallow. So you don't have as many pieces to play with. So it makes it harder to throw something unexpected at them. You see what I mean? Um, Because from player one to player 40, the drop off at Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, the drop off from your best player to your 40th player isn't that steep at Cincinnati. It's it's real steep. It's real, real steep. Once you get down to player 40, you've dropped way off. Um, famously, Appalachian State. Uh, I, I think, Kyle, did they I, I, we're not going to look it up. Someone will know and they can and you can look it up when Appy State beat Michigan. They only used. 30 players. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't many. Yeah, it wasn't many. They they barely they, they did not put that many unique players on the field. Mm-hmm. That's that's how you beat Michigan. If you're Appy State and at that time have 20 less scholarships. I think that's the FCS drop off is 20 scholarships. Um, Yeah, it's that, that that's how you win it. Anyway, yep. way off track. Kyle, time to end the show. Um. I want to encourage everyone check out the Patreon. I talked a little bit earlier about uh, trying to move to like a five episode a week format for the Buckeye Sloopcast. That's the thing we are considering doing for the actual season. Um, once the football season starts, doing five days a week. That's a huge time commitment. It would be smaller episodes. It wouldn't be these hour hour ten episodes. It would be smaller episodes. But that's still a huge time commitment for Kyle and I. So we are essentially asking for the commitment to be returned to us first. If you like this show, if you have three dollars a month, we have a Patreon goal in place. If we reach this Patreon goal, we will convert to doing a five episode a week format during the football season. That's the thing we're going to do. Um, and we would, we'd like to do it, but it's, like I said, it's a huge time commitment and, you know, Kyle needs to justify it to his wife. I need to justify it to the dogs. Even, even if you're, even if you're on kind of the fence, join the discord first, join the discord, see how you are, see how you like it there. Um, see how, get to talk with Jared and I talk to like gangland and others who are, who appear on our show in the, um, in the um in the live chat section there it's a, it's a good family it's a good family i, I like to call us and, yeah uh, if you're not sure check, check us out on the discord and if you like it and you want to see more then then hit us up from there and again it's three dollars a month the 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 lowest tier it technically the lowest tier is a dollar but it doesn't get you anything but the lowest tier is three dollars a month consider it is all i ask you can you can join us in the live chats you get premium access to the discord the discord is both premium and free as kyle said you can you can join the free part first and if you want a good introduction to the discord community this thursday and you have to join the discord to get the information to to join but this thursday uh our one of our moderators and longtime listeners of the show no sun card as a frequent Ask Sloopcast guy, but he's one of the moderators over at the at, at the Discord server. He's putting together a trivia night this Thursday. So that that's a fun, if you're looking for a reason to join, let, let that be your catalyst. Come join us. We're doing a trivia night on Thursday. Suncard did it all himself. He's the hero of the day in, in this regard. Um, gangland is already talking crap and quite frankly he he might i'm not i my my brain seizes during trivia i i don't know why so i i don't know if i'll be any good at, or not but come join come join come join come join uh join the patreons over at sloopcast dot or excuse me patreon dot the sloopcast.com join the discord at discord dot the sloopcast.com again the discord's free it's an app on your phone you download the app you go to discord.thesloopcast.com in a browser. It jumps you back over to the app. You create an account. Boom, you're in the server. It's it's really that simple. So just come join the family. 
come come be a sloop cat with all of our sloop cats. All right, Kyle, that's all the talking I feel like doing, except maybe to say, check out the 7071 shirt I'm wearing. This is a modern interpretation of the old Canton Bulldogs. You can find a lot of modernized interpretations of old, defunct professional football teams from the state of Ohio at 7071.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, are you wearing a merch.thesloopcast.com shirt right now? I got a classic We've Got Barbecue. That's, you know, that that's the Mad Canadian's favorite shirt. Yes. If you go see the Mad Canadian in one of his food truck stops, there's a decent chance he'll be wearing that. OK, Kyle, enough with the self-promotion. What's in Kyle's corner? i um, got a few things here. I'll go real quick through them. A uh, couple of Buckeye players getting paid, getting paid. Justin Fields gets his four year contract, 19, pretty much 19 million dollars, 11 million signing bonus. Good rookie deal there. Well, just, but, just so we're clear, oh. that 19 million, that's just the guaranteed money. Well, no, 11 million is the signing bonus. No, it's, tr- trust me, Kyle. He, the, the contract's worth more than 18.9. Um, that's, that's just the guaranteed money. Got it. Jerome Baker getting an extension with the Miami Dolphins. Three years, get this, Jared, three years extension for $39 million. Over $28 million guaranteed. I'm really happy for NFL players because you're seeing a lot. You're seeing the gap close a lot between what the contract is allegedly worth mm-hmm. and the how much of that is guaranteed. Yep. Uh, which is a thing that NFL players need more of is actual guaranteed money. Yeah. So a couple of Buckeye players um, in recent news here getting paid. A couple of former Buckeye players. Braxton Miller and Troy Smith wanting to start a prep school in Ohio, somewhere like you see IMG Academy in Florida. Or Bishop Gorman in Nevada. Yeah. I like it, but will it fly in Ohio under current rules? No. Things would have to change. Yeah, I'm I I'm not I'm not a lawyer. I don't know all of the Ohio High School Athletic Association rules front to back, but Can an Ohio prep academy compete with a Florida prep academy in Florida where they have spring football and seven on seven and all of these things, but you can't do that in Ohio. Recruiting players in the state of Ohio is difficult, although there are certainly teams that do it. Um, Religious schools are able to recruit from from other public schools. How does this work for a non-religious academy? I don't know. I believe there are, there's, um, the name's escaping me, but there's, I know there's a basketball prep school uh, that, that does that. So maybe it's possible, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I want this to work out. I want this to work out for Braxton and Troy. I want this to work out for Ohio State because having a prep academy in the Columbus area would be enormous. I, I I just don't know. I just don't know if you could compete with the Bishop Gormans and IMGs of the world because of the Ohio High School Athletic Association and and their tyranny. I'll say it. Their tyranny. Yeah, that's right. Their yeah. tyranny. <laughs> uh, last thing I have here, Jared. Carmen's crew, the 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 basketball tournament has come up with their their um, their team for 2021 season. Evan Turner and Jared Sillinger, well, Sillinger's your coach, Turner's your GM, Buford, Lighty, Diebler, Ravenel, Caleb Weston, Shannon Scott, Keyshawn Woods, Jeff Gibbs and Lenzel Smith Jr. will be on the Carmen's crew. Coming later in July here. I, I love I love watching. I love watching this. That's mm-hmm. it. I, I love watching it. Um, they didn't do great last year after winning it the year before. Um, I hope I hope no, they make a comeback. No Aaron Kraft this year. Yeah, no Aaron Kraft this year. Uh, is he nope. just done with basketball? Is that what I, that is? I think so. I think so. Yeah, uh, so John Diebler still talks about he might have tried for twenty twenty one, but doesn't appear that way yeah so all right that is all jared that is all for today 
yeah, uh, that's it. So with all of that being said, Kyle, I didn't line up a band. Can you talk for like two minutes for me? <laughs> oh, wow. Two minutes. Ooh. Oh, boy. Two, two minutes is a big ask. It is. Yeah. Um, just looking here. See, see what's over at see what's over at the uh, the Buckeye scoop. Some, some of the recent recent notifications here. Um, one, one thing that one thing that I, I love talking about and we haven't really seen too much just because of the changes with uh, kickoff kickoff returns um ohio state hasn't had a return for a touchdown in the past 10 years for kickoff that is yikes yeah but i mean when when you're able to fair catch it and essentially get that at the 25 yard line it's 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 hard to return it's hard to return uh right now so last time was on november 27th uh, against Michigan, when Jordan Hall returned a kickoff for a touchdown, that was the last time, November twenty seventh, twenty ten. So last time the Ohio State returned a kickoff for a touchdown. Uh, Tony Gerdeman wrote that one out. Uh, Tom Orr wrote one about can Oregon's defense contain Ohio State's loaded offense this year? It's a really good read there from from our good friend Tom Orr, and much much more over at thebuckeyescoop dot com. Kyle, I have a band. Right, right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Cleveland based band, the cloud nothings have a album coming out July 3rd. Uh, they have two songs, uh, the story that I live and the mess is permanent, uh, that you can currently access on Bandcamp. Uh, they have a, I think they have a tour planned. I, I believe they're going to be at the Ace of Cups here in Columbus, Ohio, which is North campus, I believe. Uh, so you can catch, you can catch them you can uh, probably check out their website to find the specific tour date, but I know they're going to be at the Ace of Cups, I believe sometime in August. Um, again, the album releases on July 3rd, and I'll be playing a song from that upcoming album here at the end of the show. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Cloud Nothings. For our YouTube folk, it's just Cloud Nothings. I don't know why I was adding a the there. It's the is everywhere. The Sloopcast, the Ohio State University. I'm sure that's why. The, uh, the basketball tournament. Pro, I mean, yes, I'm, I'm sure. That would be why. <laughs> I, 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 we, we, haven't, we, haven't got to, we haven't had one of these in a while. We haven't had one of these in a while. It's an Apollo sighting. Oh, there's Apollo. Hi, good boy. <laughs> He's a good boy. All right, Kyle, um, let's uh, this isn't just because he's cute. This is also because he he wants something. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, finish this show off. What do you say? All right. Sounds good. Once again, I'd like to thank Cloud Nothings for ending today's show. And once again, I would like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Uh, Kyle, we did medium roast last time. Uh, what should I do this time? Dark roast or flavoreds? Do the flavoreds. All right, let's start off with the unicorn. Uh, you don't know what it's going to be. It's just fun <laughs> like that. Uh, you, you just don't know. It's 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 something from the test kitchen. It's probably going to be flavored. Uh, but what's it going to be flavored like? I don't know, and neither will you. That's part of the fun. Uh, there's the intense blueberry. Uh, there's the Irish cream. There's the Dylan's grog which is, you know, it's like it's an Irish grog. I feel like most breweries have an Irish grog of some sort. It's it's all butterscotchy and good. Uh, there's the mom's carrot cake, uh, the mint chocolate chip. Um, that's currently sold out. I won't say that one. The vanilla buttercream, the red velvet, the blueberry cinnamon crumble, and the ginger snap. Well, how can you go wrong with any of this, Kyle? Can you go wrong with any of this? Because I don't think you can. Which one of those sounds most appealing to you? The unicorn, because you don't know what you're getting. <laughs> you, Kyle, bullshit. You are not that <laughs> adventurous. I know you. <laughs> I'm a light roast, so. Well, then you might like the flavored coffees. I might, yeah. You might like the flavored coffees. Well, let's see. I think I, I, think I had the blueberry crumble once, because I think uh, once I got a unicorn bag, and I think that's what was in it. That's my guess anyway. And like I said, I always like a good grog. Let's 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 check out the grog real quick. 
Um, coffee combines the flavors of butterscotch rum and just a hint of vanilla. Roasted daily and using only premium Brazilian beans. See, I told you, how can you go wrong with that? You can't. And you can find those coffees and a lot of uh, not flavored coffees, uh, some medium roast that I didn't mention and a bunch of dark roasts that we didn't mention on today's show. But you can find all of those at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by the McKinney Barbecue Company. Mentioned some of their um, seasons at the top of the show, their seasoning packs in the middle. I'll go back to some of their chicken rubs here. So I'm going to randomly pick some here, chicken rubs. Uh, since since we talked about the Midwest quite a bit today, how about the Ope? The Ope, it's, it is their mid... In the Midwest, we have two constants, cornfields and ranch dressing. Now, well, now you can have that with a twi- have that with a mad Canadian twist on it. Ope is a wonderful smoked ranch blend destined to make your guests say, let me just squeeze by you and get some more of that barbecue. Uh, the, the Mad Hatter, uh, it is a salty citrus pepper blend. Great for those that love that love a salt with a kick. It's a great finishing salt or to ram the glass off of your Bloody Mary. Or the Discord. I mentioned the Discord earlier today, and I'll give the Discord another shout out here. Uh, this was test, test and tested again here at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. And the issue we have is that sometimes one of our seasonings is really awesome in two different ways. Well, here you have the Discord. Um, it's it's a different version of the Four Horsemen with another blend that was fantastic, uh, similar to the Four Horsemen, but with a sweeter base and makes a great topping for your chickens or ribs. Check out those and much, much more over at themadcanyabbq.com. And be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. 